Hello, my name is Leo, and welcome to another reading of the Elder Scrolls. Today, we're going to be reading Faith Falcon Book 2 by Wagon Joss. Last time, the Great Sage was. Oh, actually, maybe I could just. No, it doesn't actually recap the last book. Okay, well. In the last episode, the Great Sage talked about the story of. What was the guy's name? Guy's name was the um Th Th Thargan Thargan. He wanted a enchanted quill to impress the the banshee that worked at the temple. Okay, oh, yeah. Faith Falcon worked up. After the test had been given and Volgadact and Taxon had demonstrated their knowledge of elementary conjuration, the great sage told them that they were free to enjoy the day. The two lads, whose most afternoons fidgeted through their lessons, who most afternoons fidgeted through their lessons, refused to leave their seats. You told us that after the test, you'd tell us more of your tale about the scribe and his enchanted quill, said Taxon. Why is that? Who's talking? Oh, that's Taxon. Okay. You already told us about the scribe, how he lived alone. Oh, no, now they're recapping the story. Never mind. How he lived alone and his battles with the temple secretary over the bulletin he scripted for posting. And how he suffered from the crimson plague that couldn't sp and couldn't speak. When you left off, his messenger boy had just had his master's quill enchanted with the spirit of a danger named Fay Falcon. No, that totally was the orc. Damn it! <laughs> Whatever. Added Volgalax. <laughs> to add the great sage's memory. As it happens said the great sage. I was thinking about taking a nap. However, the story does touch on some issues of the natures of spirits, and thus related to conjuration, so I'll continue. Thurberg began using the quail to write the temple bulletin, and there was something about the slightly lopsided, almost three-dimensional quality of the letters that Thurberg liked. A lot. Into the night, Thurbag put together the Temple of Ariel's. Ari Ariel? That's right. Ariel's Bulletin. For the moment, he washed over the pages with the Fay Falcon Quill. It became a work of art, an illuminated manuscript crafted of gold, but with good, simple, and strong vernacular. The sermon excerpts read like poetry. Despite being based on the archpriest's workmanlike exhortation of the most banal of Elysian doctrines, the obituaries of two of the temple's chief benefactors were stark and powerful, pitifully mundane deaths, transitioned into world class tragedies. Thurbad worked the magical palette until he nearly fainted from exhaustion. At six o'clock in the morning, a day before the deadline, he handed the bulletin to Gorgas for him to carry to officers in temple, the, sorry, the temple secretary. As expected, officers never wrote back to compliment him or even comment on how, how early he had sent the bulletin. It didn't matter. Norman knew it was the best bulletin the temple had ever posted. At one o'clock on Sunday, Gorgas brought him many messages. Oh god, here we go. Oh no. Wait, hang on. Who's the batch priest? I don't know. There's multiple people talking. Well, I'm not going to do voices, but I'm saying. The bulletin today was beautiful. When I read it in the vestibule, I'm ashamed to tell you I wept corpuslessly, wrote the arch priest. I don't think I've ever seen anything that captures Ariel's boy so mute of him before. The cathedrals are first hold pale in comparison, my friend. 
I prostrate myself before the greatest artist since Galilei. Gal Gal Galilei. The art priest was, uh, like most men of the cloth, given to hyper hyperbole. Hyperbole. Wait. Hype. Yes. Hype. That's where hype comes from. Thank you. Still, though, man was happy with the compliment. More messengers followed. All the temple elders and 33 of the practitioners, young and old, had all taken the time to find out who wrote the bulletin, and how to get a message to congratulate him. And there was only one person they could go through for that information. Alphys. Imagining the dragon lady, besieged by his admirers, filled the soul bad with positive grief. As he did. He was still in a good mood the next day when he took the ferry to his appointment with his healer, Telemichel. The herbalist was new, a pretty, a pretty red guard woman who tried to talk to him, even after he gave her a note reading, My name is Thurbad, Huzzuk, I have an appointment with Tammy Mitchell, one o'clock, please forgive me for not talking, but I have no voice box anymore. Has it started raining yet? She asked cheerfully. The diviner said it might. Thorbard frowned and shook his head angrily. Why was it that everyone thought that mute people liked to be talked to? Did soldiers who lose their who lost their arms like to be thrown off? <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. It was undoubtedly not a purposefully cruel behavior, but Thorbard still suspected that some people just liked to prove that they weren't crippled too. The examination itself was routine horror. Ugh, what does that mean? Oh, okay. It hurt. Wait. What, what? What's his problem? He's got, like, some kind of plague. Ugh. Okay. Tell Michael performed the, the regular invasive torture. What does that mean? Wait, invasive torture? As in... Sticking things up his butt? Oh, <laughs> sure, why not? All the while chatting and chatting and chatting. You fucking asshole. <laughs> this guy's a toad. You ought to try talking once in a while. That's the only way to see if you're getting better. If you don't feel comfortable doing it in public, you can always try practicing it by yourself, said Dada Michael, knowing his patient would ignore his advice. Try singing in the bath. You'll probably find you don't sound as bad as you think. Thurman left the examination with the promise of some oh, God damn it. Dickon chain, Dickon pain, channeling Dickon pain. With the promise of test results in a couple of weeks. On the ferry ride back home, Thurman began thinking of next week's temple bulletin. What about a double border around the last Sendus's offering plate announcement? Putting the sermon in two columns instead of one might be interest might have interesting effects. It was almost unbearable to think that he couldn't get started on it until Ephesus sent him information. When she did, it was with the note Last bulletin a little better. Next time don't use the word fortuitous in place of fortunate. The words are not, if you look them up, synonymous. What a bitch. In response, Thurman almost followed Tomarka's advice by screaming of senators and boys. Instead, he drank a bottle of cheap wine, composed, composed and sent a suitable reply, and fell asleep on the floor. The next morning, after a long bath, I began work on the bulletin. His idea for putting a light shading effect on the special announcement section. And an amazing textual effect. Athos had... Athos has always hated the extra decorations he added to the borders. But using Fel Falcon... But using the Fel... But using the Fey Falcon Quill! They look strangely powerful and majestic. 
Wait a minute. Um. But, uh. Doesn't that mean. Is the, the Daedric guy using. The, is the Daedric spirit using the, the, the pen to, like, put people in trances or something? Anyway. Sure. Gorgas. Gorgas came to him with a message from Ephesus. That at that very moment. That. Wait. Gorgas came to him with a message from Ephesus. At that very moment, as if in response to the thought. Tobat so opened it up. It simply said, I'm sorry. Okay. Tobat kept walking. Ephesus' note he put from his mind. Sure that she would soon follow it up with a complete message. I'm sorry that no one ever taught you to keep right-handed and left-handed margins the same length. Or, I'm sorry we can't get someone other than a weird old man as scribe of our bulletin. I think I know what's going on. I think... I think when he thinks it is being spoken through the... through the things. Like his intent is being perceived through the words. And that's why she said sorry, because he was gonna <coughs> yell obscenities at him. At her. Maybe. It didn't matter what she was sorry about. The columns for the sermon notes rose like the massive pillars of roses, crowned with unashamedly adorned headers. The obituaries and birth announcements were framed together with a spherical border as a heartbreaking declaration of the circle of life. The bullsman was simultaneously both warm and avant-garde. It was a masterpiece. When he sent it off to Ephesus late that afternoon, he knew she'd hate it. And was glad. Thurbad was surprised to get a message from the temple on Lorendus. Before he read the content, he could tell from the style that it wasn't from Ephesus. The handwriting wasn't Ephesus's usual belligerent slashing style, and it wasn't all in Ephesus's usual capital letters, which read like a scream from oblivion. Thurbad. I thought you should know Ephesus isn't at the temple anymore. She quit her position yesterday, very suddenly. My name is Vanderthil, and I was lucky enough, let me a minute now, I begged pitifully, to be your new temple contact. I'm overwhelmed by your genius. I was having a crisis of faith until I read last week's bulletin. This week's bulletin is a miracle. Uh, enough. I, uh, I just wanted to say... I'm honored to be working with you, Vanderhill. The response on Sundays after the service. You try to do that, that, that wispy thing that old men do sometimes when they talk. When they, they whistle at the end of their sentence. I don't know if I can do that. It's, it's very, it's very difficult to stop it, just stop. Alright, Decker Kane, channeling Decker Thane. Channeling Decker Thane in three, two, one. The response on Sundays after the service even astonished Thurbad. The Archpriest attributed the massive increase in attendance and collection plate offerings entirely to the bulletin. Thurbad's salary was quadrupled. Damn. Gorgas brought over 120 messages from his adoring public. The following week, Thurbad sat in front of his whiting plank, a glass of fine Dol Valley mead, Ooh. at his side, staring at blank the blank scroll. He had no ideas. The bulletin. His child. His second wife bored him. The third-rate sermons of the Archbishop were absolute... Athemia? What does that mean? Something that puts you to sleep, like anesthetic? Maybe. And the deaths and births of the temple patrons struck him as entirely pointless. Blah, blah, he thought as he scribbled the page. He knew he wrote the... what like, He knew he wrote the letters B-L-A-H B-L-A-H The words that appeared on the scroll were A necklace of pearl and a white neck 
Huh? He scrawled a jagged line across the page. It appeared... It appeared... In... Hmm? It appeared in... What? I can't read the sentence. It appeared... It's just read it as it is. It appeared in through... That damned beautiful Faith Falcon quill. Glory to Amelie, uh, Ariel. It appeared... I don't know what that means. I, I, I can't... I can't even fix that sentence. <sighs> ah, he's finding out that he's not an amazing, awesome person. He's just using the quill. Wasn't the whole... Wasn't that the whole point? I don't know, whatever. Don't mind sliding the quill. And porridge is spilled forth in a stream of ink. Scratched over the page, blotting over everything, and the vanished, vanquished words sprung back up in different form, even more exquisite than before. Every dab and splatter caused the document to whirl like a kaleidoscope before falling together in glorious asymmetry. There was nothing he could do to ruin the bulletin. Faith Falcon had taken over. He was a reader, not an author. Now, asked the great sage, what was Faith Falcon from your knowledge of the School of Conjuration? There's the danger, obviously. What happened next? cried Voldrag. First, tell me what Faith Falcon was, and I'll, then I'll continue the story. You said it was a dangerous said Duckerson, and it seemed to have something to do with artistic expression. Was Faye Falcon a servitor of Azura? But the scribe may have been imagining all this, said Volvoc. Perhaps Faye Falcon is a servitor of Shigroth, and he's gone mad. Or well, the quill's writing makes everyone who views it, like the, co the congregation at the Temple of... Oh. Like all the congregation at the Temple of Aradale, go mad! Who's talking now? <laughs> I don't know who's talking. Talk to them. That's it. For me, it's more as the danger of knowledge, and her scene is the danger of the wild, and the danger of revenge is Borithia, pondered Taxon. And then he smiled. Faye Falcon is the servitor of Clovicus Vile, isn't it? Very good, said the great sage. How did you know? It's his style, said Daxon. As you mean that he doesn't want the power of the quill now that he has it. What happens next? I'll tell you, said the great sage, and continued the, the tale. Uh, in part three of Fay Falcon. This has been Fate Falcon Book 2 by Mark and Jeff. But for now, my name is Leo, and I will see you next time.